was quite a little doozy, wasn't it? Indeed it was. We apologize to our viewers for the unexpected, mature content. Very unfortunate about that Aaron Gregg. You know, I used to watch him all the time in Voyeur the Annoyer. Who didn't? He was a scene stealer. We hope he gets help. If you know anyone who needs help, please call the number on our screen. Well, back to our main story of the morning. The two LDS missionaries sent home after facing charges for illegally purchasing the stimulant Adderall. Both boys were 19, and both of them, higher than a kite, and refused to identify the identity of their dealer. Well, Grant, you have to give them credit for loyalty. You know what they say on the street, snitches get stitches. <laughs> before I stuff you in a barrel and ship you off to the talentless California hellhole from whence you come. What did you have to gain from sabotaging our one chance of honest to God exposure? Did they put you up to this? Who was it, Aaron? Huh? Who's so prankster? It was me. Oh, it was. Mr. Clarence Calvin, the Broadway man, returns to community theater and sabotages his own show. We wanted to take a risk. We wanted to orchestrate a stunt that would get the people riled up, get them talking and texting and posting all over their snapshots. Snapshot. Shut up, Derek. Not to mention that fucking reporter getting on my nerves. Strange man! What a... Brilliant idea. I mean, really, making one of your actors out to be a complete damn fool on live television. Go home. You're done. What? No! <laughs> Not now, Aaron. You are relieving me of my duties? I believe I was quite clear. Don't expect to ever work in this community again. Not that you'd want to dirty your hands down here in the slums. After all we've been through, I will be condemned to hell if you think I would deliberately bring malady upon your temple of artistry. We open in a week, who else is gonna direct us? His role is filled by his immediate successor. An assistant director. Oh, fuck me. I happily accept the responsibility, Miss Sigfeld. No! Marjorie, just... no offense to Allison, but she has never directed a show before. And we still have a lot of scenes that we gotta reblock, and a lot of character sessions that we have to do, and I, d I don't know about anyone else here, but I have a feeling that Allison might turn our show into some sort of weird sexual fantasy and foray into her mind, and I am not here for that. And, and Clarence is our leader. And we, we only have two weeks left. You cannot kick him to the curb. Last I checked, my last name was on the front of the building. Please, let's just go home and rethink about this for a few hours. Sit down, Jasmine. Bitch, I will fucking unload on you. Is that a threat? Didn't it sound like one? Okay, okay. easy, ladies. Easy. So that's it then. I'm the director now? Great. Let's get to work. Fuck. Charles? It's been a pleasure.
Break a leg. Now, first things first, some casting changes are in order. Is that all right, Mom? You want to change cast members now? Yes. Is that within my jurisdiction? At this point, you do what you gotta do, honey. Excellent. Okay, Jen, we appreciate all of your work on this production, but we feel we'd like to go in a different direction with the role of Irene Adler. What? You fucking... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think she's serious. Really? Thank you, Jen. You've been great. Now leave. Who's going to play Irene? Well, I feel the most natural fit for the part would obviously be me. I'm sorry, what? Jesus Christ. Well, let's go. I'll also get some coffee or something, okay? Let's just take it down. I uh, apologize for the theatrics, boys and girls, but hey, I guess it's fitting. Allison, if this ship isn't already sunk, don't sink it. All right, now that we've cut away some dead weight, I expect to see each and every one of you at rehearsal tonight. Let's do a 6.30 instead of 7. We've got a lot to do. Especially you. She'll be okay. I gave her last match of Chipotle card, so $15. That's what needs every dinner, but we're fine. Sorry for putting you into all this. I'm sure you're wishing you hadn't gotten involved. Are you kidding? No way, no. I mean, this is great. It's batshit crazy, but it's, you know, something new anyway. It's exciting. It's just invigorating. I love it. I remember when theater used to make me feel like that. What do you mean? Listen, I'm glad you're enjoying it right now. The whirlwind of it all. So intoxicating at first. At first? I don't want to kill your buzz here, but theater is exactly like a drug. The first hit is the most potent, and then you want more and more and more as you chase that initial high, but you can't catch it. So it's like a cycle. You, you experience those massive highs, but then you have these incredible lows. Like you get mm -hmm. to closing night of a show. And after all of that adrenaline and all of that energy, it just comes crashing down. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking about getting the next high. Like, when am I gonna audition for the next show? What am I gonna audition for? And how am I gonna recapture that 
incredible, unforgettable experience of that last show I was just in, and you can't. So suddenly every project that you do just gets less and less meaningful and exciting, and it just starts to wear on you. It starts to drain you. It starts to take a lot more than it gives you. And that's where you're at. That is where I am at. Andrew says I should quit my job so that I can f- commit fully to theater and really start to enjoy it again. But I think it's the opposite. I think I have to quit theater so that I can enjoy my job again. Mm, yeah, I get that. Don't take this the wrong way, but it, I mean, we could, we can all tell lately you've been just exhausted at rehearsals. No, oh, I am. When you get to this level of tired that I'm at, your brain starts to work in really weird ways. Yeah. And corporate job plus theater at night is starting to equal a loss of my sanity. So. Don't take this the wrong way. Do I look tired? You do look tired. No, you look... No, you are tired. No. Oh, you, uh, you look great. <laughs> no, I was wondering, how does a guy like you and a girl like Allison, uh-huh. how do they end up together? I'm. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I'm just... No, no, it's okay. I mean, it, no, I get it. It's weird, I guess. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. There's just... There was... There's something about her. She's just... Her... Her... Oh bluntness and her drive and her constant you know just pushing me to be better and the way she her her, her, her vagina wow wow uh Look, I, don't, I i get it but why does she have to be so fucking evil all the time i don't know i think it has something to do with her life back in ohio I don't somewhere know. in ohio no i think she grew up there the wrong audience we'll talk about it later um you guys made some coffee while you give me a sub, please. Uh, what, well, um, hello? No, it's Hi. gone. The coffee's gone. Really? Oh, sorry. Come on, man. Shut up. Just make another pot. Well, yeah, yeah, dick. Oh, hey, I'm Claire. This Hi. is my little sister, Claire. Oh. And, uh, she calls me Dick. It's short for Luke. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Jazz. Oh my god, you guys! I, I totally, we saw the news! Oh yeah, we saw your total, your huge thing. Oh my god, it was incredible. You like that? Yes, no, it was so god. cool. Mom! No, Dad! No. Luke is here! Claire, don't, don't. Why? I don't know. I just don't want it. Um, well, I don't know. They just want to talk to you about the. Oh, oh, hello! Hey, Dad. Hi. Hey, Mom. Hi, Hi I'm Jazz. Hi, Hi there. Jazz. Nice to meet you. So, are you two a couple um, men? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're friends. We're theater buddies. It's really friends. In a zone of friendship. Theater this buddies. This is a very comfortable situation. Isn't it? Uh, p- please, yeah, you guys, sit is. down. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Claire, can you pour me a cup? Luke, drink it all. Really, man? You know the rule. Keep the full pot going at all times. Um, that is a family rule I can get behind. <laughs> so you a big coffee drinker? Oh, yeah, she puts us all to shame. I have been known to knock back. <laughs> well, that is good. You come join us here anytime. Really? <laughs> Thank you. I, I would love that. Speaking of shame, can we talk about your friend's little breakdown on live television? Oh, yeah. We actually planned that. You planned it? Yes. How? We uh, did. Yeah, we totally did. Yeah, so I just we wanted to do something that was going to leave a big impression on people. Leave them talking about it, creating a buzz about the show. And mar- uh, jazz is a marketing professional. <gasps> Are you really? You should talk to our son Kevin. Oh yeah, or you, or not? Maybe maybe we'll avoid that. It was embarrassing uh, watching it. I mean, really, I'm trying to keep an open mind about this whole theater thing, but if this is what you're getting yourself involved in, I have to wonder why you're wasting your time. It's totally working though. What? What is? I mean, you're playing. I mean, it's crazy, but well, check it out. There's already like I think. 15 people or so on my newsfeed that have shared the video, and they know that you're my brother, so they're saying there's no way they're missing the show. And you look super popular. So what, about, uh, what, what about on uh, YouTube? Oh, there's already like 50,000 views, I'm pretty sure. Wow! Yeah. Yes. Dude, I can't believe you're doing a show with the kid from Boyer the Annoyer. <laughs> no, he is so adorable. Is. Really. How did he become so mentally unstable? We have to, these are amazing. We, we, we have to show these to Clarence right now. Yes. Yes, we do. All okay. Right. Uh, gosh, it was so nice meeting you all. Yeah, you too. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your show, son. Good. 
And despite your friend, you were great on television. And, and so were you. Thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Ah. Hi, Kev. Holy shit, man. You were on TV. That was awesome. It was all over the Twitterverse. Thanks. <laughs> Twitter. Hey, you were the girl in the science jacket. It's a lab coat. But I don't know why they don't call it a science jacket. I'm Jazz. <laughs> Kevin Merrill. <laughs> Kevin. Hey, yeah, the whole news thing it was her idea. No way. You're a marketer? I'd love to talk shop sometime. Okay, we're done. We, we've got to go. I love you all, but thank you. Thank you uh, for being less mean. we got to go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hi. Bye! Well, that's my family. And not too bad. Your sister seems really, really nice. And, uh, your brother is cool. Yeah. When I say cool, I mean that your girl could have a raging erection. I'm gonna stop you right there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't wanna hear <laughs> oh, so Hey, Dear Bear. What's Hi, up? Hi, where are you? Uh, we're just leaving Luke's place. What time are we gonna meet up at Clarence's? Uh, five o'clock. Hey, uh, so how's Jen doing? She's dealing with it. <gasps> She's lucky that nobody saw her fucking up Allison's car. Well, honestly, the bitch deserved it, so I would have written something a lot more offensive. That's well, anyways, um, I'll go ahead and send Clarence the address to the group chat. Uh, Andrew and Aaron are just going to meet us there. Okay. Um, I told them I didn't think so. All right, I will see you in a little bit. Bye, Mimi. I'm a boo boo. You'll have to excuse me, friends. I'm just finishing up with a client. Oh. Please, if you'll wait in my guest room upstairs, I'll be up in just a moment. It's the one with all the theater stuff. You can't miss it. Okay. Sure, okay. no problem. Yeah, no problem. Ooh, is this it? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is it. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Brought a musical Sorry about that, I wasn't expecting you. I, all this, it, it's pretty amazing. Well, 
Someday I'll sit you all down and recite some of the old tales. <laughs> but for now, I have a feeling something more pressing is at hand. It wasn't your fault. You have to come back. If I admit my innocence, then someone has to take the fall in my place. No, no, not necessarily. It, it totally worked. People are sharing the video. Everyone's talking about Sherlock. And look at the comments. They actually sound pretty good, TBH. To be honest. B, this is in Salt Lake. Totes lit. Totes is totally lit? I still don't know. Aaron Gregg is a washed up attention Okay, well, so what? Uh, I'm mostly good. Uh, what about ticket sales? Uh, we don't actually know yet. We need to talk to Marjorie, show her the, show her the reaction online, but... Yeah. If she hasn't already figured it out herself. She's gonna kiss me right on the mouth. Easy there, Tiger. I think you've had enough cougars for one lifetime. I'll decide when I've had enough. So, will you come back? I don't think my heart can handle it. If she wants me, she'll come for me. So that's it? You're just abandoning us. You know that's not what this is. You sit there and you tell us that you have to wait for Marjorie to come and get you, but that's not how this works. That's not how the world works. You have to go out and get the things that you want for yourself. And I, I highly doubt that you came here for the mountain air and the religious experience. So what did you want? Why are you here? Three months ago, I was offered a tour. A grand revival of My Fair Lady, reprising my role as Henry Higgins. Something I've been dreaming of for years. Clarence, that's amazing. But you didn't take it. I turned it down. I turned it down because Marjorie needed me. Her theater was failing, and she thought my name could provide the necessary spark that the theater needed. She left the city for Utah. She always hated the hustle of Broadway, the harrowing grind of it all. So she left, and she fulfilled her dream of starting her own theater. And alas, she needed a director for her cute little community production of Sherlock the Musical. No offense. Aaron, at the cabin, you asked me, why would I go from Broadway to this? My answer to you now is this. One day, I hope you meet a woman who will make those sort of decisions very simple. So, how did you and Marjorie meet? <laughs> so, so curious. Uh, a story for another time, I think. Please. Please, Clarence, you have to come back. This whole thing is just, it's an anomaly. It is a mistake, and we can fix it. We can sort it out. The damage is done. You don't know Marjorie, darling. Her theater and its integrity are second to none on her list of life priorities. And it would take quite the monumental gesture to shift her opinion of me at this point. <clears throat> I happen to excel at monumental gestures. Listen up. Guys, you know, I think we're getting there. Not quite, but getting there. Uh, now remember when I give you a note, I don't need like a story or an explanation. Just say thank you, okay? Great. Um, general notes. Uh, keep up the energy and really work on those British accents. Right now I'm getting less Sherlock the Musical and more sales clerk at Harry Potter World. So just work on that, okay? Personal notes, Luke, you're so naturally talented, but the fundamentals need a little bit of work. You know, cheat out, don't look at the audience, don't break the fourth wall, go over the difference between upstage and downstage and really try and project, okay? Make sure you remember left and right, too. Mm. Yeah, that's important, too. Jazz, your understated portrayal of Molly's really coming through. Just try and break up the energy a bit, okay? Wait, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that, uh, that doesn't make sense. Because if you like it understated, if I put in too much energy, then it's not gonna be understated. 
Thank you. Do you see him? Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Andrew, on your I promise line, I need more villainy, more evil. Go ahead. What now? Um, I promise you, Sherlock Holmes, we're going to be the death of one another. Again, evil. I promise you, Sherlock Holmes, we're going to be the death of one another. More! I promise you, Sherlock Holmes, we're going to be the death of one another. You spit on me. Good. We'll work on it. Okay, uh, Aaron, I really want to change your blocking in a few scenes. I want to have you downstage left during Act 1, Scene 3 now. Act 1, Scene 3 is uh, Sherlock's number. Uh, he's alone on that stage. Not anymore. Much of our audience is coming to see you, so they're going to see you. Okay, so come and see me afterwards for some more blocking notes. You can't just insert me in everything like Jar Jar Binks. I don't know what a Jar Jar Binks is, but I can. And I will. Bloody hell. Sorry? Don't think I heard you quite right. Yeah, I think you did. I said bloody hell because I don't like you as a director and I don't like your direction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, it's almost one in the morning. Can we please just call this? The way that I see it, we could either have a great show or we could sleep. Which would you guys rather have? Sleep, sleep. honestly, sleep. I think we could have for okay. anyone. Well, it's a good thing that I'm the director then. Oh, yeah. And it's a great thing that you're paying us so well to be here. <laughs> Take yeah. care yeah. No, it's a, it's a good thing that you have something to say, Luke, because I have something to say to you too. You're going to take my part? <laughs> I might, if you don't get your shit together. Come here. What? A kiss. It's not working. We need to figure it out. Come here. Are you fucking kidding? Allison, we did that scene three times today. Yeah, and it's still not working. I know that you're new to theater and don't quite get it. But when something's broken, you fix it. Come here. What do you guys think? How's the kiss looking? Ten it's improved, ten. right? <laughs> I have one more. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. I think we're good. Can we go? Can we go? Five five out of ten. Ten. No, I. No, yeah. Wait, so. No, fine. Leave. We'll just have a shitty show. Wait. Are you really leaving? Aaron! Aaron! Is he all right? Derek texted and said that he'd fallen from the rafters onto the floor. Is broke. Ruptured his spleen and... Uh, that was years ago, I'm fine. Sorry, is What's going okay? on? Derek, why would you say something like that? Is this another cast prank? Do you know what's going on no, here? I swear, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm gonna find out, okay? Derek! Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Telephone and tell me I'm your own. Hit it. Hello, my baby, hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire, honey, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby. Telephone and tell me I'm your own. Yes, telephone 
and tell me I'm your own. Clarence, meet me backstage now. Everyone else, go home. Marjorie, I demand to know what he's doing here as director of this production. Allison, go home. That was to acknowledge an acceptable performance. Now, didn't I tell you never to come back here again? I would like to return to the Ziegfeld Theater to finish my work on Sherlock the Musical. After what you did, I told you you would never, ever work in my theater again. It worked, Marjorie. The publicity stunt was a raucous success. Raucous? Have you checked your ticket sales today? Well? Well, we're not gonna sell out, but it's better. But how the hell, Clarence? How, how did you even come up with an idea like that? I didn't. Your cast did. Your cast. What? You heard me. We open in a week. And I want you to get this curse of a show where it needs to be before opening night. Good luck. Marjorie. Did she destroy the show, Annabelle? I admit that promoting Allison was not my most astute decision since opening this theater, but it's nothing you can't fix. 